Hello guys, welcome to my channel Sky Pilot here. What I've got for you guys today is a problem solving package here from my good friends at Beta FPV. If you have been looking at my channel, you know I have been running the new Express LRS uh, nanos and light receivers, etc. Uh, my 95X has the version 2 in, which has a cracking good range. <laughs> Check out that video, I'll leave it up on the screen there. Yeah, over a kilometre uh, with this little tiny receiver, which is truly unbelievable. But what I've got for you guys today is if you are playing around with some ELRS receivers yourself and you end up getting yourself a bit of a bricked receiver, what you'd normally have to do is plug it into a flight controller, a quad of some sort, run it through your Express LRS configurator and try and fix it that way. If you want to do it an easier way, which I've been wanting to do for some time now, is plug this straight into your USB port, which is what this little package is. So on the back it says FTDI burning device, which is basically a unbricking tool. Uh, yeah, typical beta FPV packing, nice little snap lock bag. Keeps it nice and safe. What you receive inside is your four connector points, which will be connecting to our receiver directly. I'll explain that shortly. We get the USB adapter here. It does allow for two separate purposes. So there's Express LRS Recovery 1.0 and Express LRS on the other side. We'll be concentrating on the yellow and blue side. What you also will receive, which I've actually taken time to uh, pre-solder to my receiver, you'll receive one of these four pinned adapters, which you simply solder on to your receiver. And from there you connect with these independent plugs. Connect away so that you can talk to your USB. I'll explain that in two ticks. Before I do that, I will get on to the third thing you will receive, which is this funny looking adapter here with some little spring loaded plugs. So, what you can actually do with this if you don't have a solder, don't despair. This will allow you to actually push and they will self locate into the required holes. You do need to put the receiver on a non-slip surface so connect your four wires up here which is your ground 5 volt TX and RX and then you simply press it on the correct four pads. Just give it a little bit of a press so the springs are loaded and you have connected away. Bear in mind you now only have the one hand you can do everything with on the PC which isn't a great dilemma either as I will explain shortly. That's what this little gizmo is for, so pretty handy if you don't have a soldering iron. I will leave a picture up on the screen there. Uh, if you do have one of these light receivers, this is actually version 1.0. You will need to place your receiver into boot mode, and to do that, you need to solder these two pads here together. I'll leave a picture up on the screen while I'm having a little bit of a chit chat uh, so you can see which two pads they are which is not all that hard. Quick dab of solder, job's done. So once you've plugged on your four point adapter, it's simply a matter of placing your cables to their respective plug, which is ground up the top here. Then we have our five volt. Now the next one is fairly important. The next one down is our TX. We need to make sure that it is going to be plugged into our RX on our USB adapter. So if you have a look at that, you'll see from the top we have TX, RX, 5 volt and ground. So I will put that in now so that we don't get mixed up. So the next one along is the RX, which is the blue, and we need to make sure we plug that into the TX of the receiver. That is jump over to the configurator and we'll run through those steps there so we can see how easy it is to <laughs> flash this receiver if we have a brick there. Okay, I've just opened up my Express LRS configurator 
this is version 1.4.1 it uh, was the latest a week ago so it may not be the latest but it doesn't matter all good so simply plug in your usb and hopefully you've done this before and your usb device gets recognized by the configurator if it doesn't check out zadag uh, i'll leave some links below if you're having trouble recognizing usb back to it so we will see there is a solid blue light on our light receiver that means successfully that means we are successfully in bootloader mode which is good if that's flashing at all uh, you haven't correctly connected to bootloader mode and this will not work and you'll see on our little gizmo we have a blue green and a red light jump over to our configurator and this is the super easy part guys you've already done the hard work scroll down to our beta fpv 2.4 gig which is our receiver and we're looking at the light 2.4 rx check out the versions here select the version you want bear in mind make sure it's the same as the version on your radio otherwise you will not talk to each other so i'm going to jump straight on to uh, two point 4.0 which is what my receiver my radio is okay double check things here beta fpv 2.4 light 2.4 now flashing method make sure you have selected uart uh, if you select anything else this will not work and just double check your ticks and flicks down here i don't have binding mode on i don't do that so that's fine and if you select the bottom serial port area here and you'll see with mine my silicon com 5s come up and that's obviously how we're going to be talking if you click this area nothing comes up it looks like you're probably not talking to your usb device so check that out and see how you can get the correct driver anyway so all we set there pretty easy guys and next thing to do is simply build and flash And when you do this for the first time, you will see that things do move a little bit slowly, so don't stress too much. Just give it a few moments. It'll run through its protocols, etc. And the important thing to keep an eye out for is when you get to the open COM port part of the firmware flashing process if that sits on there for more than five seconds then uh, i think you'll find it's not going to work so hopefully fingers crossed we'll be good here today so i can show you what's going on now uh, this is real time i'm not going to fast forward this so you guys can see exactly how long it takes to unbrick your receiver Okay, I would say we are very, very close. The next couple of lines will show serial port COM5 and bang, straight into the writing process. You'll see the percentages come up. And we will now get to 100% and I'm super confident that we're going to have the big green bar of success. If it doesn't work, you'll get a red bar, which explains a whole lot of stuff, which just makes you frustrated. But all is well. Success. All we need to do now is click straight at it. We are done and dusted. There you go, guys. Done and dusted. I have now given new life to my ELRS light receiver. Yeah, these aren't very much. They are about 17, 20 bucks. However, it's very frustrating when you have one and the only thing stopping you from flying is a dead receiver. So this to me is a super handy tool. I'll leave some links down below, guys, if you want to check out uh, where you get this from, from Beta FPV. Thanks to Beta FPV for supplying me this, because it's already fixed two of my receivers, so that's going to save me some dollars, which is awesome, so I can get back into the sky. Welcome, Beta Kit, to my edition. Any questions, guys, let me know. Like I said, everything is here that you need to do this. So if you guys like to bench 
test your gear before putting it into the quad. Absolute must. Thanks, folks. Any questions, drop them down below. And don't forget to whack on that thumbs up and bell icon. I have the brand new Pavo 25 here, which I am going to be doing a build of very shortly. I have done a quick unboxing of this Pavo, and it's going to be a direct comparison with my 95X, which should be super cool. This is a really nice quad that's just come out. So have a look at that, guys, if you have time. If you've lasted this long, thanks very much. And I'll see you guys again real soon. Bye for now.